welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a health and fitness Q&A because I popped up a question on Instagram and I asked you guys to leave me your health and fitness questions and today I'm here with Bo Bressington. And this is Rachel Ost. So what we're going to do is just go through these questions that you guys have left us just to give you a little bit of background info if you haven't come across my channel before. Um, as Bo said, I'm Rachel Ost. I'm studying psychology and I'm also studying nutritional medicine. And Bo has worked in the fitness industry for nearly 10 years. He has a whole host of things under his belt. Together, we own the blog Eat, Run, Lift, and we also own a gym of the same name. Okay, so I like to exercise, but I can't afford the membership of a gym. Can I be in shape and have a nice body without actually going to the gym and doing exercise with no equipment and stuff? Of course. Of course you can. If people can get buff in jail with minimal nutrition and minimal exercise equipment, so can you. And if you think about it, you, it's not, I mean, we get a lot of these questions all the time and they're like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. You don't have to go to the gym. Well, you, can't not, you can't afford a gym yeah. membership. It's not just gym or no gym. Remember, there's so many other things you can do. There's sports that you can do. You can go hiking, you can go swimming, you can go skiing if you, you live next to snow. You can play basketball. That's a sport. But there's yeah. so many other things that you can do to help with your fitness levels rather than just going to the gym or working out at home. What areas does your Mesomorph plan target? Like how do all the plans differ in terms of their goals and results in that there's four different body types? Hope you're both doing well. Just for a little background info, if you haven't seen any of our ebooks before, we have one ebook called the Get Lean Guide. It's divided into three exercise plans and three eating plans. The eating, well it's guidelines, the eating guidelines are all in one book. And the exercise plans are split across three different books and you download which one suits your body type. So how does the Mesomorph one work? So the Mesomorph plan is for people that have an all-around body. So you have another two types called your ectomorph and your endomorph. Mesomorph is right in the middle. So you have to split training pretty evenly. So cardio and also uh, a, a balanced weight training program as well. So you, the way that you divide it up is depending on whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, you can start off with a couple of days of training as it progresses and you get better, you split it up so everything is still balanced and even. For this one. Okay. Bo's done a lot of research on this and we've been trying to study up on it a lot because it's very interesting. I have a condition called PCOS and I've always found it difficult to lose weight and recently I've been advised by my doctor that I have an underactive thyroid. Is it a hopeless cause? What exercises can I do that would really make a difference? First up, it's not a hopeless cause. No, there is hope for you. Um, I've had a couple of clients that have had polycystic ovary syndrome for those of you that didn't know what it meant um, pretty much what happens is your body builds up an insulin resistance so insulin can be what's left over of sugar so it usually stores around your midsection around your abs and um, love handles love handles sort of that's area. the word I'm looking for and imagine that you're a car and you have fuel carbohydrates are your fuel if you put too much fuel into a car, it's just going to splash out and it's just going to not go anywhere. So imagine that that fuel is your fat and it's just stored somewhere and it doesn't know where to go. So what it does is it builds up and it builds up and the only other place that it has to go is onto your ovaries. So it causes cysts on your ovaries that can cause a lot of problems. As well as having the slower thyroid, these are all connected together. So if your body has a slow thyroid, your metabolism is slower, so that means your ability to burn through carbs is slower. If you can't burn through those carbs, they're just gonna store in your belly. So if you're having a high carb diet, this can actually be really bad for you in terms of getting polycystic ovary syndrome. And not or only- if you have it already. And not only that, it's gonna store as fat, so that fat actually produces more chemicals, which turn into more fat, releases bad hormones, and also having more sugar, in your diet can actually help uh, cancer cells grow. grow. So there's a lot of things that you need to be aware of, not only just the polycystic ovary syndrome. As far as those two conditions are concerned, the biggest thing that will help you is typically your diet and there's also a natural supplement by ATP Science, it's called T432 Plus. They have a really, really good podcast about polycystic ovary syndrome and insulin resistance as well, so I'll pop that in the description box too. What's your cardio routine? Cardio might be my least favorite part of working out. I want to keep it interesting and exciting. You rock, Rachel. Oh, Rachel, you rock. What about me? Uh, for cardio, I kind of hate cardio as well. So I do enjoy boxing. 
because it absolutely destroys me. It doesn't matter how fit I think I am. As soon as I start doing like a box fit or a boxing session, I'm dead within like and we do a bit two of, minutes. Yeah, we do a bit of MMA training as well. I did a bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu back in the day. I enjoy playing basketball. I play that two times a week, um, which is a 40 minute game. And usually I'm playing most of the game. So it's a really good workout. If you can find a sport that you enjoy doing, there's um, some yeah, there's some cardio you can fit in the week. How important are rest days and how many do you recommend per week? Uh, depends on your body and how fit you are really. So I'll put my routine under the spotlight as an example. So what I'll do throughout the week, if I have my routine down pat, for example, I do like a back day and then the next day I do arms and then the next day I do legs and I just move through the muscle groups like that. That way I'm getting a lot of exercise in during the week, but those particular muscle groups are getting some rest in between and then I'll still take one rest day. It's usually, would you say, it's not a Sunday anymore. I don't know. You rest day? No, yeah. we usually train on a Sunday. But it doesn't always have to be the same routine. Like you can switch it up a little bit, but you just want to make sure that you're not overlapping body parts as much as you can. So make sure that you have a back day that doesn't interfere with a chest day. Um, and then make sure your legs are separate and then your arms, depending on what your split is. So it can usually take between four and five days for your body to fully heal from doing a heavy weight session. Like anything like working the big muscles like your pecs, your back, um, and your legs especially, it can take um, usually five days for the protein synthesis up. I did this last time for the protein synthesis to take effect uh, until your body is fully repaired. We call it the super compensation phase for anyone that wants to Google it. Just wondering how long it took you to get to the point where you're at. I started a health journey a month ago, but I'm getting impatient. Not impatient enough to quit though. Good that you're not quitting, um, but definitely stick to it. I get asked this question a lot, like so often, and people are just after the results. They're not after the process. They're not really after having a healthier lifestyle, they just want to lose weight. Um, I find just adopting the whole lifestyle and eating healthier more often and making exercise a part of your routine will make it become very easy. Uh, I've been training for nearly two years now. I started in April 2014, filming this in January 2016, so yeah, nearly two years. It takes about eight weeks to build a solid training program and about 12 weeks to actually see some results from it. So once you get to that point and you can adapt further than that, um, that's when you actually start to see a massive change in your body. You'll change your goals as well. You'll see some differences, but then you're like, I want more difference. And the way that you have to do that is adapt your training program to be something that's a little bit more efficient. You might have to be doing more cardio. You might have to do more weights. You might have to start eating a little bit better. You might have to start taking supplements. So there's a lot of things that you can do to increase your training so you can see better results in the future. I'll direct this one to Bo because as part of fibro, he gets some of these symptoms. So how do you stay motivated to work out and eat well when you ever feel down, please? I'm going through a hard time at the moment and I'm finding it tough to stay on top of working out and eating well. I find that when you want to exercise doesn't really match up with when you need to exercise so if you have a set program and you're finding a lot of these problems and struggles in your life that come from depression anxiety even just a lot of uh, lethargicness you need to train when you can so if you're scheduled to train in at like 6 30 a.m in the morning and you're not feeling great until the afternoon and you have that free time go for it or even if it's after work and you're feeling a little bit better go for it. Exercise is about finding what you can do, not about what you can't. Is it true that lifting weights and doing cardio is not as effective as just doing cardio alone for weight loss? I've been doing both, but a friend told me I should just do cardio. I'm so confused because I haven't found a concrete answer online stating what is more beneficial. First off, I'll just state from my experience and then Bo can go into more depth. So I know when I first started exercising, I was, you know, walking, running, going on the rowing machine, that sort of thing, which is pretty much just cardio and I was not really getting any results until I actually started weight training because when I started weight training, I started putting on muscle and the muscle allowed me to have a more toned figure and to actually lose the weight a bit easier. Hmm. So it comes down to what your body type as well and which way it can process energy the best. So let's say if you do weights, it's gonna increase lean muscle mass. That means it's gonna increase your metabolism. It's gonna build a stronger structure for your body. So when you do lift weights more, you can burn through more energy. But on the other side, there is doing cardio. So cardio makes you fitter, whereas weights make you stronger. 
if you do cardio, you're actually increasing your ability to push oxygen. We call this your VO2. The more oxygen you can pump through your body, the better ability you have at burning fat. Do you think someone can succeed at lifting successfully without a personal trainer? Yes, just depends on how coordinated you are. I know when I first started training with Bo, uh, I could not deadlift to save myself. It was really, really bad. It probably took me quite a long time to get that right. So if you're someone who can watch videos or look at photos and you can get your form right, that's awesome. You can go and do that on your own. If you're someone who's a bit more uncoordinated, like me, it'll really, really help you to have someone there and show you the technique and show you exactly what you're doing wrong. So what I do for like the first four to eight weeks of a program is start off really light um, and I'll do 10 repetitions of mainly everything because it takes you about 500 repetitions for you to learn how to do a technique. So if you can do more repetitions on really lightweight, the connectivity between your brain and your muscles will grow. Like, do you remember the first time you drove a car and it was like, I can't do this. What am I doing? I'm freaking out. Oh my God, I'm going to crash. But then a couple of years on, you're like eating your food, doing your makeup, you're on the phone, you're texting your best friend. I don't know why I have two phones. Not that we advise that. No, don't do that. But your brain and your body will connect the more times that you do something. So we tried to pop in as many questions as we could. If you did enjoy this Q&A, we would appreciate it if you'd give us a thumbs up. And also we're thinking about starting an Eat Run Lift YouTube. So what they'll be on there is very in-depth demonstrations of how to do certain exercises. How to flex. No one needs to know that. Oh. Fitness routines, all that sort of stuff is purely gonna be health-based, just Eat Run Lift based for us to refer back to between our website and the YouTube. So if you'd like to see that, leave us a comment and let us know and we can start working on it. That would be awesome. I would love to do an Eat Run Lift YouTube channel. Bye guys. See ya. Um, it can take the fat as your work, work, bleh, exercises, and just Google, bleh. That's too bleh. I can't even talk now either. What are you doing?